Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, I'm just going to go unscripted and show you a photo that I was working on and said, you know what, let me hit record and just share this with the audience. I do have somewhat of an idea of what I want to do with the photo, but I have not tested this and this is 100% me experimenting and I encourage everyone to do the exact same thing while they're working with their photos. Doesn't matter what application you use, experiment and see what you can do. I will note everything I'm doing is non-destructive inside of On One Photo Raw. However, if you are going to work on an image and you're going to work destructively, I highly recommend you make a copy of it so that way you can go back to the original and edit it. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me know in the comment section below and I can make a video that really outlines what a destructive edit is versus a non-destructive edit, or you can simply just do a Google search. Now, let's go ahead and hop into the computer and take a look at the image we're going to be editing today. We are inside of On One with another photo, and as you can see, it is extremely, extremely underexposed. And that's because I exposed for the highlights in this particular image. So let's go ahead and see how we can recover those shadows in an image and, you know, really just make a overall good photo. So I'm going to close down this left pane here. That way we have some more real estate to work with because I'm not using a preset. And the very first thing that I like to do in photos like this, it is a landscape, but I really enjoy just changing my color profile. And what I'm looking at is the the highlights over here or the, the sunrise, because that's what this is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit vivid. And then I'm gonna hit AI auto just to see what on one thinks the exposure, exposure should be. I'm not really feeling that. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify this myself. I'm just going to pull down on the auto, knowing that I'm gonna to have to recover those shadows here in a little bit. Uh, but this looks pretty decent. If I hit the backslash key on the keyboard and I'm just checking to see what this is doing. I like the color that it's bringing out in the mountains here, the blue look and then the orange over here. So now what I'm gonna do is come over to uh, local adjustments. You could do this in effects or local adjustments. It's really just a, a personal preference. Um, I'm going to just reset that. And in fact, I think I'm going to pull up on the shadows and we'll go with a 15 adjustment for now. By hitting the letter M on the keyboard, I'm going to get my masking bug and I'm just gonna pull this up to probably somewhere around here. And this is now giving me that balance in the image without really over modifying what's happening in the sky. Now I am going to make this sky more blue and dramatic up here and really increase that. Uh, but what I wanted to do is get that balance in the foreground to the background first. Now, what I can do with this particular uh, edit is I can really just hone in how I want this shadow to work. Now, one of my favorite things is experimenting inside of On One. You can do this by changing the blend mode or the apply to. So I know that I have a ton of shadows in the shadow area. So I could just try and apply this to shadow tones only and then just kind of pull this down. And this is giving me that look of, it's kind of still early in the morning because what you don't want to do, or at least me personally, I don't want to overexpose the foreground so that way it takes away from the true subject of the photo, which is this sunrise. But at the same time, I do want to show a little bit of the detail that's in the foreground. So. Uh, by doing this, I'm really honing in where this uh, adjustment is going. So if I turn this off, you can see it's pretty dark. This is opening it up a little bit more. You may not even need to do this because as you see, uh, when I pull this up even higher, um, the shadow adjustment, when I pull that up higher, it starts to do this weird band look, all right? And that's when, you know, you have to include a few more tones, but then when you start doing that. So I would say on this particular image, you know, we tried the uh, we tried the experiment and I would say that it failed. And that's OK, because 
The beauty of photo editing and having a program like On One where you can edit non-destructively, you can literally just try things to see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then you just delete it and you know that you're still uh, preserving the pixels inside of your photo. So I'm okay with that. Uh, however, for today's purposes, I'm just going to leave it like so. Turn this off and turn it back on. And I think that that works out for what we're trying to accomplish, or at least what I'm trying to accomplish overall. Uh, now it's time to work on this sky. And the way that I'm going to work on the sky is first, I need to really darken the sky because I want the attention to be over here on the sunrise and then the glow that's happening behind the mountains here. So I'm going to add a new adjustment. And this adjustment, I'm actually going to leave it alone. I'm going to hit the letter M to get the masking bug. This time I'm going to do a linear bottom. This is going to keep the adjustment from going to the bottom of the image. So everything that's on the top of the image is going to get the adjustment, whereas everything else at the bottom is going to be left alone. And we can see that here. Now I am going to pull this down just before this dotted line starts to come into the, uh, the highlights here. And then I'm going to just kind of fade that a little bit deeper and we'll pull this down to about here. Now, again, I wanted the sky to be a little bit more blue so I can move my color temperature and just make it a little bit more blue. But now I'm starting to get like that unnatural uh, fade on the overall image. So what I want to do is maybe just pull this out a little bit more, let it fade better and maybe even pull this up. Uh, and I don't think the sky needs to be that dark. So maybe, maybe something like that. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. And I think that that looks good. Now we're going to take this a step further, but in order to do that, it's time to jump into the effects module. And we're going to go into the effects module. And this is just my basic color correction for the R6 that I like to have on my photos. That's kind of where we started, by the way, uh, or not kind of, that is where we started. And if I turn both of those off, to me, the image is pretty flat, and this is the reason why. I add in this tone enhancer. It brings out the contrast for my personal liking, uh, coming from the Nikon days. And then I have my color effect, where this is just like my base starting point. Uh, you don't have to have something like this. I just personally like it. If you're interested in what that looks like, just drop it in the comment section below, and I'll make a video about that. But if I hit add filter and we're going to go to one of my favorite filters, which is the photo filter. There's so many utilities for the photo filter. Uh, and one of them is what we're going to actually use it for today, which is kind of what I think it was intended for. Um, and that's going to be adding in this graduated look of the blue sky. Uh, and then we're just going to mask it away from the areas that we don't want it in. So to do that, we're going to click on filter type, and then I'm going to click on graduated. All right. This is essentially doing the exact same thing that we did earlier, except for it's built into the filter here. So if I hit this drop down, I have a few different options available to me. Uh, and the one that I want is probably top third, because I feel like the sky should only be blue in the top third. So I'm going to do top third slow. And you see that it's really just adding in more of that blue. Now, I feel like this can come down a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is grab the amount slider just so I can see it better. All right. It's really, really blue now. And I'm just going to pull the distance to the left is the direction I need to go. And just until it starts to go right over those mountains. Now your photo is going to require its own thing. So please 
do what makes sense for your photo. Uh, and I think that that's going to work pretty good. Work on the transition. I think the transition is actually, uh, let me pull this back for a second. And we'll make the transition really, really sharp there. So it's easier for us to figure out like, okay, I want this to be like probably about there because once I add in this transition, it's really gonna blend, right? And we want this to be not so noticeable. So I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit more, maybe like so. All right, now what we can do is grab this amount slider and pull that back down because that was way too much blue going into the sky. So let's turn this off, turn it back on, and we're starting to get that look that I was really going for in this image, or at least what I was seeing with my eye. And that's what we're really trying to accomplish with most of our photos is just trying to get us, we're just trying to get a photo that looks appropriate to the way that it did when we took it or what inspired us to take it. Now I am going to hit add photo filter again. This time I am going to really work on this sunrise area here. So I'm going to select a color by clicking on the color module, then get my color picker and click right here to get the orange, uh, which I think I need this to be maybe a little bit more of the orange. So we'll go there and probably because I, uh, I want this to shine through. So I'm going to make it more of a golden color. All right. And then I'm just going to pull this up until I start to feel or until I feel like it's really enhancing that area for us. Now, let's turn it off, turn it back on. And this is covering the entire image right now, which is not what I want. So I'm going to hit the masking icon, hit the letter M, grab the masking bug, come to the drop down here, and I'm gonna go with strong vignette, and I'm gonna go with edges. This is going to allow me to put that look just inside of this particular uh, area or the, the mask that I'm creating. So we'll make this a little bit smaller and tighten it up around just inside of this blue area. And then I'm going to pull this out and maybe even bring this area more narrow. Let's see how that looks off and on. Turn it off, turn it back on. And it's really darkening things. So I need to brighten this yeah I think we'll go with strong strong seems to be doing the uh, most of the effect that I was really going for and now we'll hit the letter B get a brush change our paint mode to paint in and I am just going to paint this in across here all right and this is just going to help us with that glow you don't have to do this that's just a thing that i like and i think will help with this overall image as well as painting this glow into this area just a touch all right and of note my opacity and flow they're both at 100, but I do have a 100% feathered brush as well. So now if we go ahead and turn this off and back on, you can see there's just like this glow that's happening. All right. Now, oh, turn that back on. I just wanted to minimize it. We're going to do one more filter. And this time is going to be for the foreground here. And this should be kind of like a darker orange all right so we're going to grab our color picker again and I'm going to go with orange maybe go dark here and then I'm going to hit the uh, actually so you have a few different options all right 
If you want complete control over the mask, then you should absolutely use the masking bug for what I'm about to do. But for me, I'm not overly concerned about having the complete control over this. So I'm just going to use the, grad the graduated filter uh, drop down again. And this time I'm going to go with bottom half slow. Uh, and I think it is, yeah, bottom half slow. Because I only I want this to be at the halfway mark uh, because it should be meeting this area. Now I'm going to increase this color so that way I get like that golden uh, foreground, right? And I'm making some artificial colors here. <laughs> These, uh, as I seen it in the, uh, the the morning that I was shooting this, it did kind of look like this. I'm not gonna maybe not with the the way that the sky looks so uh and if we need to we can come back to the photo filter on the sky and we'll just pull down on the opacity of that so now the sky gets like uh there's this blue look but it's not like an artificial blue and i think that that looks pretty good uh just increasing that or enhancing that a bit now once this is all said and done, what I like to do to my image is really dial in the tone one last time. And I do that by adding a tone enhancer over the top of the entire layer stack. And this is where sometimes what you do in the local adjustments don't impact the stack. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But what I'm gonna do is increase the exposure increase the contrast and then maybe open the shadows just a touch and pull down on my blacks because that's where I'm going to get my real contrast there and I know that those cars are in there and I could take this into Photoshop and really get rid of those cars uh, on one I wouldn't use to try and get rid of those cars uh, maybe with a 2023.1 update that could be a thing but uh, what we could, you know, you could also try and get rid of this orange thing, but I'm not really worried about that. So here's the before. It's a flat and, in my opinion, a very dull image. And here's the final version that I would probably uh, just save in my library. Again, there are to edit that I never really share on the channel because, you know, it's just me practicing inside of on one and that's what i encourage everyone to do if you want to learn how to use this software you just have to go in every day and click around on stuff and just see what happens hopefully the videos that i produce are good guides to get you started but the the real goal is that you go in and you experiment because that's how you're going to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And don't worry about if it comes out bad. Like if I can give you permission to stop worrying about if you make a good edit or a bad edit, because I would consider this to be a very subpar edit for me personally. Right. But at the same time, I now know a little bit more about what I would like to do with photos in the future. And this could even help with your photography when you're out in the field and you're like, you know what? I think I can do something with this in post-production. So don't hold yourself to, you know, this really harsh, I have to make a beautiful work of art every time that I sit down in front of the computer, because even the best photographers will tell you that they will go to multiple locations or the same location multiple times to photograph it, to get it back, try to do some edits and realize that they need to go back and re-photograph it. And, you know, eventually they get the look that they were going for. So, you know, take that pressure off yourself. Enjoy the process of editing the photo and the process of capturing the photo.